Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ng again. I'm going to talk to you about dating a pregnancy. First of all, you need to know what is terminology. LNMP means last normal menstrual period. So meaning that it is the first day of your last normal period. What does normal means? Normal in this context means a patient has to have regular cycle of menses and we are taking 28 day cycle as normal. So pay attention, it is not when the period finished, it is when the period started. Okay, so let's say this patient has period from 1st of January until 8th of January. So the LNMP is 1st of January. Okay, and then for EDD, meaning it is an estimated date of delivery, it is counted based on this formula. It's 280 days from your LNMP and which means you need to add 7 days plus 9 months. So for example, your LNMP is on 1st of January. You need to plus 7 days and 9 months, which means it will be on 8th of October. And 266 days from day of conception, it means that 266 days from the fertilization. So why, do, why does these two has a 14 days difference? It's because uh, ovulation occurs at day 14 of menses and that is when your sperm will meet the ovum and it will cause it will have fertilization why do we need to know about this is because some patients get pregnant with ivf and you need to calculate from there and this calculation will not be covered in this lecture redd means revised estimated date of delivery meaning that the edd has been corrected based on ultrasound assessment what is dating scan? Dating scan is basically to date the pregnancy. You want to know when is the EDD or the REDD. Okay, and you want to know how big is the gestation. You want to know whether this is 18 weeks or 20 weeks. All right. So why is dating scan important? Because all the management in pregnancy will be based on the date and the gestation. And it is very important to get the date correct from the very beginning of the pregnancy. And why will we have inaccuracy of EDD is because some patients are not certain about the dates or there might, there might be variation in timing of ovulation or it's because of the operator or the culture who didn't know how to date the pregnancy. And you need to know when to do the dating scan and what are the structures to refer to and how to do a proper dating scan and which date to use. So at the end of this lecture, I hope that you will know which date to use and you can understand the principle behind. As for when would you do the dating scan, it should be done as early as possible. How do we date the pregnancy? Conventionally, we use Snager's rules. So which means you use your LNMP and then you plus 7 days and 9 months. So provided that the patient has normal period, meaning that the cycle is regular and assuming that every woman under the sun has no uh, menstrual cycle of 28 days. But what is the cons of it is not all women have regular 28 days menstrual cycles and not all women will remember when was the last normal menstrual period. Okay. As for ultrasound, it is actually more accurate, especially it is done correctly and it is done early. But the cons of this method is that not all women has early dating scan and not all measurements are correct. So for Nagel's rules, so when you have your LNMP, let's say it is on the 1st of March 2022. It is the first day of your last normal menstrual period. Plus 7 plus 9, you will get 8th of December. And when you date this, you will call it as period of amenorrhea. Let's say today the patient is 8 weeks. So you put it as 8 weeks POA if you count it based on Nagel's rule. For ultrasound, you scan the parameters. It depends on which parameters, but not a 3D scan. Okay, Parameters will be taken based on gestation. It can be a crown round length. It can be a BPD with female length or H circumference with female length. And the date that we use, we will call it as REDD. And it is called period of gestation instead of POA. All right. I would like to show you how to put your probe for early trimester or those gestation that is less than 20 weeks. Okay, so you put your probe in a sagittal view, sagittal meaning that it is straight here. Okay, and then after that, you should actually put at the suprapubic region. Okay, 
And then after that, you will need to tilt it to the left and to the right. It's a very fine movement. You shouldn't put your probe facing towards the head of the patient because the pregnancy is actually at the pelvis. So the probe should be pointed towards the pelvis, which is this angle. Okay. After you have done the sagittal view, from the left to the right, you have sweeped your probe. You should do a transverse view. A transverse view is like this. And you should tilt it upwards and downwards just to screen and see how many baby there is. So as for some reason, the baby is always easier to be fine in a mid-sagittal view at this posture. Sometimes you need to tilt your probe as slant as this. Okay, and remember, don't put your probe at the umbilicus to look for a 10 weeks, 11 weeks or 12 weeks pregnancy. I would like to show you what we will see when you do a scan. I have to mention and highlight to you that when you do a scan to say whether this is a intrauterine gestational sac, you need to show that there is a bladder. This is the bladder, okay, which is hypoechoic. And you need to see these three lines which represent the vagina. And you can see this is the uterus. All right. And then this is the cervix here. So this is the cervical canal. So you have to show that this set is actually connecting together with the cervical canal and into the vagina. This is an important landmark. You should practice to obtain this image. Then only you can say this is an intrauterine gestational sac. Okay. The next thing I would like to highlight to you is magnification. When you want to scan, you don't make it too small. You need to actually magnify it a bit bigger so that you can see and you can measure correctly. And when you do your scan, you need to sweep your uh, probe from the left to the right. Okay, so just want to show you this structure here. Just now this structure here was the yolk sac. This is the leg, all right? So you need to see from the left to the right and from the up to the down to see how many fetus that is inside, okay? Then after you have identified how many fetus, then you will proceed to measure the crown rum length or the BPD or femur length, okay? So for crown rum length, we would want you to measure in a mid-sagittal view, meaning that you cut your body into left and right, okay? So this is what we want. This fetus is a bit too flex, but never mind. So this is the head, okay? This is the spine here, and this is the rum, which is the butt, and this is the leg, okay? So if you can get this image, which will be good enough for your level and the machine, okay? So you measure from the crown means the head, rum means the butt, okay? Then you can see the fetal heart is beating over here. This is not a perfect crown rum line measurement, but if you can get this image, it will be good enough. Okay. And now I'm doing a transverse view to examine again. Okay. So I want to show you what are the things that you shouldn't take. You shouldn't take a coronal view. As you see, coronal view meaning that you see into the mirror what you see. These are the eyes, the place that is the eyes. And a lot of people will just make a measurement from here to here. This is a wrong measurement for crown rum line. Okay, you shouldn't take the measurement. This is wrong. Okay. Okay, you, if you can see you can see there is something like a sac over here this is actually the anion which is normal in this gestation okay that is the face of the baby okay and a lot of you would like to comment that 
this image is IUGS. This is actually a wrong demonstration. I purposely show you is because a lot of people just scan and see a fetus and say, oh, this is IUGS, which is wrong. As I mentioned to you earlier, you need to find the landmark. You need to see the bladder. You need to see the cervix. And you also need to see the cervical canal and the vagina to say that this is IUGS. So this is actually a wrong demonstration. That is what I mean. You actually should show us where is the bladder, the cervical canal, and also the vagina. Okay. Apart from crown length and also BPD femur length, you can actually measure a gestational sac. Gestational sac is only take uh, measured before you can see the embryo as for the purpose for dating. The accuracy is around plus minus five days. And we do it as a mean sac diameter, meaning that you need to take three dimension, AP, height, and also transverse. And it reliable up to 14 mm. Generally, we will accept 25. Okay. And you repeat the scan after 10 to 14 days later to establish whether there is a viable pregnancy or not. Chloral length should be measured when you can see the embryo and can be used up to 84 mm. When the chloroform length is 84 mm, it means it is around 14 weeks. Accuracy is also again plus minus 5 days and most of the time you actually no need to repeat the scan to confirm the date provided that you get a true mid-sagittal view and your measurement is accurate. So my tips for you is you repeat a scan in another 10 to 14 days right, to get the exact CRL. You have to get the exact CRL and you also have to be careful with N and Kefali if you do the scan very early, let's say eight, nine weeks, because that's that time the uh, skull ossification has not occurred yet. Okay, if you have achieved 12 to 14 weeks, it might be a bit difficult to get the mid sagittal plane, like how the uh, video that I show you earlier, the fetus might be in two flex position. One of the alternative is you can do BPD femur length or head circumference femur length and the accuracy will be plus minus seven days. Okay, so this picture on my right will be the ideal crown arm length. You can see this is the skull, this is the spine, okay, this is the intracranial structures that show you the landmark. This is actually the maxilla bone, okay, the tip of the nose, and this is the butt the rum okay so this is a standard crown rum line that we will take and you'll see that is the fetus is not in a two flex position okay and when you see a fetus that is very early it's impossible to see all these structures at this gestation on my left side okay so what you can see is this is actually a yolk sac so you shouldn't include the yolk sac so this is the head and this is the rum Okay, so you can take this to this. Okay, so as I mentioned to you earlier, this is very early. I will recommend you to repeat a scan in 10 to 14 days. At that point of time, you will be able to see clearer picture. Okay, and hopefully you can obtain this kind of picture on the right side. These are more examples of crown arm length. So you can take from here to here. Okay, this is the yolk set. You shouldn't take from here to here. That is wrong. Okay, this is the amnion. Okay. So you should take from this part to this part, okay? Not here to here, huh? As for this one, it's actually from here to here. This is actually the yolk sac, and this is from here to here, okay? This is the yolk sac. So yolk sac should not be included. So what should be taken when the pregnancy is at 14 to 20 weeks or even above higher to 20 plus weeks? So um, you cannot take CRL because CRL is only accurate when it is less than 84 mm. So what you should do is you take femur length, BPD or head circumference. Okay, the accuracy is up to plus minus 10 days. And if you realize that the femur length is very significant shorter or there is a big discrepancy in terms of the gestation, then you need to refer, you need to think about fetal anomaly. This picture show you how we take a um, BPD and femur length. This is actually a 19-20 weeks kind of uh, BPD femur length. So you can see this is the arrow sign, the thalamus. This is the CSP. Okay. Then you can get this uh, skull here. And where should you put your marker? It should be at the outer and the inner. And then the BPD means a line. 
in between the widest portion of your skull which the marker should be at the outer and the inner perpendicular to this midline over here okay head circumference you will take outer and outer everything out there okay so that's how you get your head circumference as for femur length you should take from the diaphysis to diaphysis and you have to enlarge the image and make sure this femur length is as parallel to your probe you wouldn't want to have a femur length that is vertically like that and that will cause an inaccuracy in your measurement and how do we decide the date after you have scanned the patient then you need to see which gestation is the patient and then which parameter that you use okay and what should you do with the date that you obtain and what should you do with the edd so you have to use the lmp if the ultrasound date is within the five days of lmp for crl or gestational set when it is less than 14 weeks otherwise you should use the ultrasound redd so the same come to 12 to 14 weeks if you use femur length bpd or femur length head circumference then you need to see if the date difference is more than seven days then you need to take the redd if it is 14 to 20 weeks you use femur length bpd or femur length head circumference you shouldn't use crl anymore and if the date is more than 10 days discrepancy then you should use the ultrasound redd and you have to remember whenever you see the patient you don't just scan 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 and give the patient many 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 different dates okay it should be the earliest most reliable ultrasound date that is given that will be the redd and you should not keep changing based on subsequent scan okay, i will give you a few scenarios so scenario one you see madam a 32 years old came from booking on the 27th of july she give you the lmp of 20th of may and you calculated her edd which will be on 27th of february 2023 so based on this edd you count her poa period of amenorrhea so you found out that on the 27th of july she is nine weeks plus two days okay so nine weeks plus two days we are expecting to scan a crown round length all right so her scan when she see you her, that was the date that she has a first ultrasound scan and you scan her you get a crl of nine weeks six days and from the ultrasound it says that the red is 23rd of february the scan based on the ultrasound so can we follow her edd 27 or should we use 23rd all right so let's see back the, this table okay so we know that this patient is at up to 14 weeks all right and then we use the crown rum length and so what does it say if the ultrasound date is within five days of the lmp okay so we see how many days difference it's actually four days difference right so we can use her lmp for her date otherwise we use our, our ultrasound but because it is within so we can follow her edd all right so now we come to scenario two you have a madam b same she came to you on the 27th of july same she has a same lmp on the 20th of may you have calculated uh, her poa is nine weeks two days and her first scan when you scan eh, the crl is 10 weeks two days and the scan the edd based on ultrasound scan is 20th of february so this time can we follow the edd so we see back the table again it is up to 14 weeks you use the crl okay how many days difference it is actually seven days different 20th to 27 is actually seven days different so it has been more than the five days already so otherwise we use the ultrasound redd so meaning that we need to use the new date follow the redd which is on the 20th of february 2023 and based on this today on the 27th of july her just she is 10 weeks two days pog okay that is how you should document for scenario three you see same lady who come to you for booking but one month later having the same lmp having the same edd but now one month later she's 13 weeks five days okay this is another patient not the same patient huh 
So the first ultrasound scan done by you on the 27th of uh, April, uh, August. And the BPD and female length shows 14 weeks, 5 days. And the scan date is 20, plus two, uh, 20 of February. So in this case, can we follow the EDD? So again, we go back to this table. So this time she is at 13 plus 5, so which is here. And we use female length BPD. We didn't use crumb rum length because the person did not manage to get the crumb rum length. Okay, never mind. So can we follow the EDD? So now we need to ask ourselves, how many days difference is uh, the RDD and the EDD? It's actually seven days difference, right? So if seven days difference means at this column, we still can use patient's own EDD, right? So we should follow her EDD. And this is scenario number four, Madam D, who came to you three months later. Okay, so this is the commonest scenario that you will face later on. So she come to you on the 27th of uh, October. Same, she give you the same LNMP, the 20th of May, and you know the EDD is 27th of February. And at, on the 27th of October, she's actually 22 weeks plus 3 days already. Okay, so now you cannot measure crown rhomb length, so you can only measure BPD, head circumference, and femur length. Alright, so... The first ultrasound was done by you on the 27th of October. So what do you get? You get a oh, BPD female length of showing 19 weeks. So you can see roughly around 3 weeks discrepancy. Okay. So the scan EDD from the ultrasound is saying that the EDD is on the 13th of March. Alright. So can we follow the EDD? Again, we come back to this column. So this we see is 14 plus 20 weeks. So even though it is more than 20 weeks, you should can still follow this column. Okay, so we use female line BPD and then you can see the LMP. If it is more than 10 days, we should use the REDD. So it is actually 14 days difference. So we should follow the REDD, which means that we should take 13th of March as her REDD. You need to inform the patient that there is this scan discrepancy. From your scan assessment, you get the new date is on 13th of March, which is 14 days difference. And you need to repeat the scan in two weeks time to see whether the, uh, the scan in two weeks time is almost similar as yours or it is actually you, you are the person that will scan it wrongly. So we cannot be sure. And what are the possibilities is the patient is actually having fetal growth restric restriction or it is actually a wrong date. So at one point on the 27th of October, you will not be able to tell. So you need to repeat the scan again. Okay. So the incorrect image, the common mistakes that we do is crown length. For example, crown length, it is two flex or you are taking the coronal view. If you can see here, this is actually the eye. This is actually a coronal view. A lot of people will just measure from here to here and say this is a crown length. This is actually wrong. So you need to get a mid sagittal view. So this picture over here is actually mid sagittal view, but this is too flex already. So this is also an in, uh, uh, incorrect image. Okay. So for BPD, you only look for the arrow sign, but you need to, you didn't see the CSP. So by right, you should look for the arrow sign as also the CSP. For abdominal circumference, we do not include it into dating scan because usually ideally dating scan should be done before 20 weeks. But I have to include it inside here because a lot of our patients actually come late. They only come at 22, 24 weeks and onwards. So we do take abdominal circumference as a marker. So a lot of people, they will do the abdominal circumference without the gas, uh, gastric bubble or when the full length of the umbilical vein are seen. So this is also actually a wrong one. And a lot of people will take this as well because this ideally you shouldn't see the kidney and this spine should be at 3 o'clock. It should be like this picture in the next. This is an ideal abdominal circumference measurement which you have the spine at 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock. You did not see the full length of the portal vein. You only see half of it. Okay, Or you can see actually it is a J sign here. 
okay and this is the gastric bubble and you take take everything outer and outer and if you can see the spine here is not cross up so if it is cross meaning that it is actually a slanted view which is wrong so we are not going to go very detailed into how to take the abdominal circumference image huh? so my final slides for you what are the things that you should take back today? You need to practice on how to scan. You need to know how we do the dating by Nature's rules or by ultrasound. Ideally, when you scan the patient, you should print a picture and attach it with the patient's notes so that we can see whether you scan it correctly or not. Magnify your image. Identify whether this is an intrauterine gestational set or not. If let's say there is discrepancy of date after two scan, you should refer because you didn't know which one to use. All right. Last but not least, what is late booker? Late booker refers to those who has the dating scan after 20 weeks. A lot of time when patients come to the clinic Kesehatan or MCH to do booking, and then they were told they were given a, a, an appointment which is five weeks, six weeks later for scan. That should not be practiced at such a home because you want to scan the patient as early as possible to get the dating correct. But if you have patient who come at five weeks, four weeks, then it will be difficult for you to scan because on TVS, you can see the gestational site at around five, five weeks plus. By TAS, maybe around six weeks. That would be a little bit difficult. All right. So ideally, you want to scan early if you are unsure. I recommend you to refer but you should also brush up yourself and scan because it has it is going to be a very useful tool for you in future okay that's it thank you for your attention